Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, and here we go, this time of year again, we're coming up to Halloween, and here we go! What do you think about uh, using fire in your photography and smoke bombs? Are we ready for this? Let's do it! Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, it's dedicated to thinking out of the box creatively as a photographer and a photo artist. With that out of the way, let's jump into our program, and that is we're, uh, we're coming up to Halloween, and I see a lot of people, including me in the past, try to use smoke bombs and fire in our photography to be cool and uh, do some unique things. Well, I stopped doing that years ago. Uh, I actually witnessed uh, a bit of an accident when somebody was putting on a display of using fire in photography. And uh, it turned out that this person didn't have a permit to do this. And I, I found out that in some cities and organizations, and I'm speaking about the United States, I don't know how this is worldwide, but you do need a permit. You have to have safety features in place with fire extinguishers, et cetera. The point is uh, somebody like a model had gotten burned. You know, you play with fire, eventually you will get burned. And uh, it turned out that we live in a very litigious society and the parents were not too happy about that. And uh, this person got sued and his liability insurance did not cover doing stuff like fire. So you have to be really, really careful on this stuff. So I don't do it, but I think we all go through that phase. So I'm gonna show you how I do it in Photoshop but I'm going to stand with Seth Miranda. If you ever heard of him, he's on Adorama TV. Uh, he went on about an eight-minute rant about uh, this using fire and, and other techniques in photography and being a little bit on the dangerous side and how we should stop doing that. And, uh, of course, I stopped doing that years ago. But um, I'm going to play about a, maybe a two-minute segment of that. And then I'm going to show you what I do in photography using Photoshop, so 100% safe. I don't have to worry about permits and all that kind of stuff. So let's take a look at what Seth has to say regarding working with fire and other unusual things that could be very hazardous and dangerous in our photography. Here we go. Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Seth Miranda. I'm a pro photographer here in New York. We're on my balcony at the studio here in Manhattan and I've been doing it for about two and a half decades. So yeah, there's been a lot going on I've seen over the years. And you know, this is a nice photo nerd video lighting grip studio type channel. If you're into any of that stuff, go ahead and subscribe. You might like it here. And don't forget to check out the Discord, which is full of people just like yourself, uh, helping each other out with Q&A and 24 seven support, as well as sharing work and all sorts of stuff. And it is free. Hit the link. All right, now that that's out of the way. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of trends come and go in, in the creative realm, you know, the way people try to stand out with their work, because we're all shooting the same things after a while, people, portraits, sports, whatever. And they always try to find a way to kind of elevate and get more attention. And that's cool, and I'm all for creativity, but I'm also for keeping things professional and keeping things safe, uh, because those people are trusting you when they come onto your set. So when I started seeing things like this, and stuff like this, I don't care what genre you shoot, but if someone's getting in front of your lens, you're responsible for them. And I'm not saying, you know, on the fly, you're in a war zone, you're a photojournalist, and you're responsible for everybody. I'm saying they're walking onto your set. It's up to you to keep it safe. And if you're going to do stuff like this, and, and I was going to stay out of this. I wasn't going to make this video. Once I started seeing the comments of, like, praising this, joking about it, not realizing how serious something like this is, and then more and more people posting stuff like this, I, I just had to say something. I don't know. It's it's. I feel this is a community. It's been my community the majority of my life. So I feel like this is something that kind of has to be at least heard a little bit so you get a different side of the coin on it, okay? Look, you wanna get creative and you wanna push things, that's great. But when you put someone at risk like this, when someone enters your set, you're responsible for them. I, I don't care 
what you say, you're putting them in that environment and they're trusting you. And it also affects the rest of this industry with things like insurance going up because of people creating things like this that causes someone to get hurt, which causes more incidents like this to be on record, which means that we all get affected, guys. But even worse than that, stuff like this, where the girl is jumping and then slipping, as a guy who came from an industry where I saw a lot of bad injuries, BMX, I mean, horrible, horrible injuries, Someone like that could end their career right there by breaking their neck, snapping their ankle, getting pins in their ankle, just so they can live the rest of their life because you wanted to get a splash shot that was basic looking at best. You wanna do that shot, fine. Then do the research on how to do it properly and safely. Build a platform that, that's grippy, has traction, drainage, that will not get slippery when she lands. Make sure that, that water's out of the way. Don't put her on a slippery, plastic sheet that gets even more slippery when you throw water at them. And keep in mind, as tr talented as some of these people might be, especially if you're shooting younger athletes, there's only so much experience they have where you might splash someone like that and they might get spooked and their form might get off and they might crash and burn and it's on you. But Hey guys, let's talk about, first of all, using smoke bombs and uh, why, for me, uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, one of the reasons basically is I'm never in control of the wind outside. If you're doing this in a studio, you got to make sure you have a huge studio with good ventilation to use a smoke bomb inside there. But most of the time, people are using it outdoors. And the problem you have or challenge you have is the direction of wind. In other words, if I like the way that maybe the sun is uh, going to backlit my subject, and uh, I'd like that perfectly in my photography, but yet when I'm using a smoke bomb, the, the smoke is blowing a different way I don't want it to do, um, I'm fighting that all the time, trying to change my angle, but then the light is changing and it becomes very frustrating. And again, the question really is, why are you using, using a smoke bomb to begin with? Is it to be cool or, you know, is it about the subject or is it about the smoke? And I'm going to show you some examples here that are not my images. And then uh, we're going to take a look at some images I've done using a uh, fire. Uh, and I'll show you how I do it in Photoshop to be totally safe. But before I do that, if you could do me a favor, uh, please, if you're new to this channel, subscribe, hit that like button, and hit the notification bell. Next time I upload a video, you get notified on that. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at some sample images here. Now, again, uh, just as a quick preview here, this is um, something I just found on the internet, just quickly to show you. Um, you know, when you look at this smoke and in the subject there, there's no emotion in her. She's just sort of standing there. And, you know, really, is this about the smoke or is it about the model there? And it just, it doesn't come across very well. I have to admit, I have done this, okay? So we all sort of got to walk through this a little bit to get it out of our system, but uh, not very creative there. Same thing here. I mean, it's blocking her face. Uh, look at this. You're flirting with danger on holding a smoke bomb. They do get hot. You can burn your hands. I would never, ever have a model do anything like that. So to me, that is a, another big no-no right there. If we take a look at this again, no emotion at all, just sort of standing there. And when you look at this, you're wondering, is this about the smoke or is this about the subject, the model? And what's going on here? Why do we even have the smoke? So I think sometimes we get just caught up on, ooh, is this ever cool? Look at the smoke and, and just, you know, it, it adds to the image. Well, does it really add to the composition? That's totally questionable right there. So let's take a look at some of the stuff I've done in the past, and I'll share with you what I do now when it comes to smoke and uh, working with fire. And I'll show, you how, I'll show you how to build this in Photoshop. Okay, first of all, this is um, uh, El Eleanor. Uh, God, I can't think of her last name. I've worked with her a few times. This is out in uh, a desert about an hour outside of Las Vegas. And I had her pose like this. I had an idea in my head to do something a little bit on the creative side, but uh, a nice, easy pose somewhat dramatic, but again, that's not dangerous right there, but I added all this fire through Photoshop to come up with that concept right there. Uh, another one, fire all over her, but again, this was all done in Photoshop, didn't have to worry about the ballerina getting burned, very, very safe to do. Um, I did this at a conference one time, I added the, the smoke down here in the fire, and again, it never was there to begin with. I just did that in Photoshop. Here's another one I did at a conference one time. Again, you don't want fire coming out of somebody's hand. You're flirting with danger. This is all done in Photoshop. Um, this is uh, Lillian that I've worked with in the past. She had an idea. She wanted to be out in the woods with the, the uh, piano on fire. So I took the shot indoors 
cut it out and put it in the woods. And again, uh, just lit up the um, the piano with uh, fire. And again, had to get that kind of stuff out, again out of my system. This one, um, yeah, try that with a model with real fire and see what's going to happen. I mean, you're guaranteed someone's going to get hurt and burned on that. So again, uh, this was all done in Photoshop. But here's how I use uh, smoke and uh, fire now today. And there's got to be a reason for this. So uh, this is something I did um, in 2022. And again, I added the fire and smoke in the background. It sort of lends to the composition here because it's a battle scene. And a lot of times you will see fire and smoke in a battle scene. And again, something like this. I added the fire and some sparks and smoke. Again, just to add to the atmosphere of the, the image in the composite. So this is the way I tend to use um, smoke and fire. And I do this all the time in Photoshop. I don't have to worry about liability issues, safety features, and trying to control where the smoke is going. So with this out of the way, let's take a look how we could do this in Photoshop. Okay, everybody, this is the way I would work in Photoshop. And I'm honestly going to try to do something a little bit different in Photoshop that I've never done before. And I'm just going to be curious to see uh, how this comes out. But uh, let me show you the traditional way that I work in Photoshop. Now, this image here uh, could be a high school senior, a basketball uh, player, and I want to add some fire to uh, the basketball. And one of the things I've done over the years, and this is about, ooh, boy, I'm going to think about 16 maybe going on 17 years of collecting different assets. I have a uh, internal drive on my system. It's a terabyte. It's uh, full of all these different assets that I use. Let me go over here to um, uh, the bridge. Hopefully I have the bridge open. Yeah, there we go. And here's a whole collection of different assets that I use in, in compositing. And I have a category here called overlays. And I open that up. Uh, down here, there's a category called fire. So let's take a look at fire. And uh, we'll just take a look at some of these. But it's a full collection of things I've accumulated over the years. Uh, everybody asked me, where do I find this stuff? I can't remember because I've done this years ago. Um, I used to try to find some free stuff out on the Internet. It took a lot of time to find good quality stuff. I just end up buying them from different sources out there. You can get on different mailing lists and stuff. Just do a search. Uh, out there on the internet for overlays for Photoshop. You'll find plenty of stuff out there in different categories like smoke and fire and, uh, you know, just other things like um, uh, lens flares and, and different things. But I think I chose this one right here. But before I do that, I'll also just show you that um, if I go back to overlays, I have another category down here. Should be smoke. And instead of using, you know, smoke bombs, which I very seldom ever do anymore, but if I had to, there's a whole collection of smoke bombs that I could use with different colors um, and other smoke features that I have here in the, this category called smoke. And um, so with that out of the way, let's jump into Photoshop and let me show you how I would use this uh, in an image. So let's close out of that. Now with um, this image selected, what I want to do is add this uh, fire to the, to the uh, basketball. And so with this open again in Photoshop, I'm just going to grab my move tool and just uh, click and drag that into the image. And we don't need that anymore. So let's close out of that. And uh, let's move this around. And one of the things I want to do is, is um, I want to reshape this so it fits around that basketball. So uh, I'm going to do Control T. And I'm going to do a right mouse click on that. It'd be Command T on a Mac, by the way, and just do a right mouse click and choose Warp. And I just want to reshape this. So I'm going to push this up a little bit. And again, I could actually reshape this later if I want, but uh, let's do this right now. I'm just sort of guess at this a little bit. And we'll select Enter there. And uh, let's use a screen blending mode, which is really important. Screen blending mode in the drop down menu here will actually get rid of all the black that we see there. So let's go to screen. And there's my fire right there. Control T. Again, Command-T on a Mac. I want to resize this. And let's just squeeze this in a bit. And again, I'm not going to do this really accurate. It's just to help explain the, the concept here. Push that in. We'll just position it about, say, right there. And then enter on the keyboard. So it looks like you know we've got some uh, flames coming right out of the basketball. Totally safe. Cool, right? You don't have to worry about liability issues. Now, just to jazz this up a little bit, if that was really some flames there, uh, he would be lit up a bit. So 
let's do this. I'm going to select that layer right there. And I'm going to add a curves. And what I want to do is take the curves here and push this up to lighten up. I'm looking at the subject right now. I don't care about background stuff right now. I'm just, I'm looking at him. I'm looking at his face, his arms. I need to lighten that up if there was really a light coming from those flames. Also, I'm going to go to the red category. I'm going to push up the red a bit, and I'm going to go to blue, and I'll push down, and that'll add some yellow. And what I'm doing is I'm adding some, almost like the flame colors uh, on his skin right there. And now with that done, I'm going to go over here to the image. That's the key right there. And I'm going to go grab my selection tools here. And let's just choose. Again, that's from their toolbar. Let's choose Select Subject. Let Photoshop do its thing. And with that selected, uh, what I need to do, in fact, you know what? I made a mistake. Let me uh, deselect that for a moment. I'm going to go over here and do Control-I. That would be Command-I in a Mac. I'm inverting that. So uh, remember the rule, white reveals, black conceals on a match. So the black is concealing the color I just did on him. And now I'll go here and choose Select Subject. Let it do its thing. And the reason I want to do that, I want to limit my painting to the subject matter. So now when I go here on the mask, I'm going to grab my paintbrush. So B for brush. And I'm going to make sure I'm painting in white so I can see down here I'm on white so if it wasn't I would flip-flop that to make sure it's white and uh, my opacity is at 20% that's pretty good if it's 100 I would drop that down to 20% it's a soft edge brush and I'm just gonna go lightly here to paint in I'm just stroking over the area to add some lightness and actually have some of the color from the flames if that was really flames uh, on his arm because obviously it would be there and on his face a bit, and probably a little bit on his jersey, maybe a little bit on the arm over here. And you get the idea. I mean, you you, you do this to your liking, uh, maybe a little bit there. And so there's a before, after, before, after. Let's uh, get rid of the marching ants. Some people call them dancing ants. I call them a pain in the ants. So Control D or Command D, like in David, to get rid of that. And uh, I might even expand my brush a bit and just add a little bit to the background and again this is totally subjective but there there you go before after before after and that's the way i would be working in photoshop adding some uh, you know flames or smoke or whatever it is um obviously this is safe right so uh, i can come up with a similar effect and I don't have to worry about endangering a subject matter, especially if you're doing high school kids and that. You know, they like the look of this stuff, but uh, boy, you're playing, you know, the old saying, you play with fire, you will get burned. And the last thing I want to do uh, is have somebody get hurt and get sued. And uh, I, you know, I, I didn't realize, but you, you got to check your liability insurance. A lot of liability insurance, this is called out of the norm, and it won't cover that. So, if you're playing with fire, you better have liability insurance that will cover this if an accident happens and you just don't want to be in that awkward and bad position. Now, let's try a different technique. And this is going to be totally new to me. I don't even know if this is going to work. So let me get rid of this. And uh, let's try something totally new. Uh, we have a new feature in Photoshop, and this is the latest version of Photoshop. And I'm going to grab my selection tool lasso tool and I'm just going to draw over my selection tool like this randomly so there's my selection and then generation fill I'm going to choose uh, let's go with uh, fire flames and I'm just curious to see what happens let's click on generate and see what happens And again, this could be an alternative. If you don't have, you know, a collection of overlays like I do, I've collected over the years. Um, yeah, not the greatest. I mean, it, it attempted to do that, but uh, let's move this up a bit. Uh, let's try that again. Let's Well, let's take a look at the other options. There's this option. There's that option. Yeah, was not happy with that. Let's regenerate that again. Let's see what happens. 
and it takes a little bit of time. But this is probably a, you know another way we could do this. And no, nope, I didn't like that. So the best one so far is is that one right there. And um, you know I don't know if we could uh, maybe expand. Well, you're expanding the ball there, so. Uh, but I would keep playing with that a little bit and see what happens. Uh, maybe I would reselect it and make a bigger selection to see if it'll pick up more, you know, of the flame and that. So that could be an option. In fact, you know what? Uh, what the heck? Let's do this one more time. So with the selection tool, let's go a bit higher. Let's see what happens now. So again, let's take a look at um, fire, flames, and let's see what happens. And again, this is just an alternative. A way of doing it but i prefer using overlays i think it's easier uh, you have a nice collection of different uh, looks of fire that could be used where oh well, that's better okay i like that better uh let's take a look at the other options Ooh, not bad okay so you might want to try this two or three times um not a bad look right there so maybe try that if you don't have a collection of overlays don't want to spend any money hey it's built right into the uh, upgraded version of photoshop so hopefully you enjoyed this video. You learned something. If you could do me a favor again to help me out, like the video, subscribe if you have not subscribed, hit the notification bell. And if you have any questions or issues, if you could do me a favor again, my email should be at the very bottom of the screen right here. It is stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Again, stephenphotoartist at gmail.com. Please feel free to um, send me any uh, questions, comments regarding the video or some things you'd like to maybe have me uh, talk about in the future on these videos. Okay, with that out of the way, uh, let's get out there. You know my ending all the time, and that is let's think out of the box, literally, creatively think out of the box. Get that camera out. Hey, let's try some stuff like this. Let's try some unique things, adding smoke and fire to your images and try to make it part of your uh, composition to add something and not be distractful. Till next time, see ya.